Welcome along to this video um, in which we're going to test these Hammond output transformers. So this is the model 1650E and I've got this amplifier here that I've built around these transformers and what we're going to be doing here is first of all measuring the DC resistance of the output transformer across the primary, so anode to anode DC resistance. And then after that, um, what we're going to be doing is running some test signals into this amplifier and watching the output uh, happen on the oscilloscope and see what its capability is of producing a nice clean square wave and producing some nice power um, at uh, low frequency at high power ratings. So let's get started. First of all, the output transformer. So our primary windings are on this side and our voltmeter is, our amp meter is here. So let's power that up. One side of this is blue and one side of this is brown and our DC resistance Let it stabilize. Looks like about 225. Looks like about 225 ohms. Now let's have a look at this thing and how it performs on the oscilloscope. So this is our nice uh, EL84 valve amplifier, and we're going to be running it into a dummy load, which is just a pair of uh, thick film 15 ohm resistors stuck onto a big old chunk of heat sink here. So put those into the back of the amp. So this load is not quite 8 ohms, it's around 7.5 ohms. That's going to be important when we start doing our calculations later on. Okay, next thing, signal signal generator here. Input here, and we're listening to the left channel. Let's put that in the right channel because it's easier to reach. And let's get the oscilloscope connected across that. So, let's get that on there. Let's make sure that we've got the focus please probe set correctly on times 10, which we do. And we'll put the probe across the dummy load. And let's turn the amplifier on. And we should see things starting to warm up in here. Yes, indeed. There we go. Now let's switch to our oscilloscope screen. Start up our handy little USB oscilloscope here. Full screen that. Now we're going to have our probes DC coupled because we don't need the AC coupling messing with our frequency response here. Um, we'll set ourselves to one volt per division, turn it on, and we're at one millisecond. Now we're already putting a one kilohertz sine wave into here, so if I increase the volume, we should start to see one kilohertz. Now if we set our output to about 1 volt RMS on the output, then we should see a nice sine wave at 1 kilohertz there. Let's start playing with our frequency here. Let's crank that down to maybe... Hmm, five hundred hertz, two hundred hertz, 
100 hertz. And let's just change the time base on the oscilloscope. And 50 hertz. Looks like we've got a little bit of a boost in our tone controls here because we're looking at 1.3 volts RMS now. So let's just turn the bass control down a little bit. This amplifier does have tone controls, bass and treble, and they don't have a center detent, and nor do they have a defeat switch because I didn't bother adding one. So let's go down back to 1 volt. Set ourselves back to 1 kilohertz just to make sure that we are still looking at 1 volt RMS. There we go, 1.006 volts RMS. That looks good enough to me. So let's go back down to where we were, 50 hertz. There we go, 50 hertz. 1.03 volts RMS, 40, 1.028, 30, 1.012, 20. Okay, just out of idle curiosity, how low can this go before it starts looking horrible? Let's try going down to 19, 18. Now remember, we're only putting out one volt here, so I'm not really expecting this to get nasty until very, very low. What are we looking at now? 13, 12, 11, 10 hertz. Still clean. 9, we're at 8 hertz, 7, we're still at about 960 millivolts, so this is still a fraction of a dB down. This is 6 hertz, 5, 4 hertz, let's just change our time base up a little bit and look at this. Three hertz. It's just starting to look a little bit messy on there. And two hertz. We've lost our sine wave. So at an output level of one volt RMS, we've got a frequency response here that looks clean down to about three hertz, although it is a little attenuated at 760 millivolts there. By the time we get up to around 8 hertz, we're essentially at full output voltage there. Right, so much for our 1 volt RMS test. Let's increase things a little bit. So, the laws of physics governing all electronics up on the wall here. What we're going to do is work out what output RMS voltage constitutes 15 watts. So we can see that voltage is a square root of power times resistance. Our power we want is 15 watts, which is what this unit is capable of delivery, delivering. And our resistance, as we said before, 7.5 ohms. Not 8 ohms, it's 7.5 ohms. I'm on the 8 ohm tap on the transformer because that's the closest one, but in fact, 7.5 ohms. So, let's get our frequency back up to 1 kilohertz. 1 millisecond here, let's just adjust our sensitivity a little bit here. And so what we're going to do now is dial up the output we're looking for 10.6 volts RMS. We'll have to dial up the output of the signal generator a bit. There we go. 10.6 volts RMS at 1 kilohertz. So we're now dissipating 15 watts through this lovely heatsink here. It can take 15 watts all day. I've had this thing on much bigger amplifiers than this. So, let's start dropping the frequency. So 10.6 volts, that's what we're aiming for. Let's start dropping the frequency. So, once again, 
900 hertz, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 200 hertz. And let's just adjust our time base a little bit so we can see what's going on here. 200 hertz, 10.6 volts RMS, as you might expect. 100 hertz, 10.6 volts RMS, looking good so far. Let's try 50 hertz and tweak the time base again. 10 point, in fact, 10.7 volts. Didn't obviously adjust the tone control quite perfectly back then. 40, 30. Okay, 30 hertz. We're at 10.7 volts. Well, it's starting to look a little bit messy here. At 25 hertz. It's not quite a nice sine wave anymore, is it? But it's close to a sine wave. That could be a little bit of crossover distortion in the tubes as well. There's 20 hertz now. And that's beginning to look a little bit unpleasant. But that's 10.2 volts RMS. So how high do we have to go to get this thing looking appreciably close to a sine wave at full power. This is 29 hertz. Okay, so at full power it's clean to about 25 hertz, but it's still delivering full power, it's just distorting. I don't think that's too bad. Now what we're going to do is look at square wave performance. So let's come back up to 1 kilohertz. Alright, 1 kilohertz, there we are. And change the wave to the square wave. Oof, that doesn't look so good, does it? Now 1 kilohertz has got a bit of overshoot, hasn't it? Not sure I'm overly pleased with that. Actually, I think I need to adjust my uh, negative feedbacks there, but nonetheless, let's push on. What happens if we go up to 10k? doesn't actually look all that bad. What about 20? Nah, see now 20 is a different story. This could be the transformer, could be my negative feedback, could just be my amplifier design. I'm not super impressed with the square wave. 10 kilohertz, it doesn't look too bad. Oops. 5 looks, now it's overshooting a bit. There's 1. That overshoot's fairly consistent, isn't it? I think I need to tweak my negative feedback, but in my defense, this is the very first prototype of this amplifier, which I have subsequently developed and refined since then. Okay, so what do we know? Power is absolutely clean down to subliminal frequencies when you're outputting 1 watt. Power is clean at 15 watts, delivers full power down below 20 hertz, but it starts to distort around 25, 26 hertz at full power. And as I said, measuring the DC resistance across the anode to anode primary, uh, we got 225 ohms. So, that's the measurement analysis for my Hammond 1650E output transformer.